Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be covering querying data using the Firebase Cloud Firestore. Like most, if not all, database technologies, Firestore queries allow you to write simple to complex queries to get exactly the data you want. So let's get started. Nope. Cut that out. <laughs> So Austin, what are Firestore queries? Well, if you're familiar with the relational databases, then you'll know that you can write SQL statements to ask the database for a certain set of data based on a certain set of parameters. Yeah, and even though Firestore queries uh, rely on a NoSQL database, you can essentially do the same thing as a SQL database. But because of the way the data is structured behind the scenes, there are some quirks whenever you're getting into your more complex queries. So on the back end of Firebase Cloud Firestore, uh, the data is indexed in a way that makes it very performant when you're writing mostly very simple queries. Yeah, but whenever you get into the more complex queries and you start asking for different ranges of values, it can get kind of complicated. But fortunately, there are some nifty tools that are built into Cloud Firestore that allow us to deal with more complex querying such as collection group queries and composite indexes but we will cover those a little bit later in the video nice yeah so let's talk about the anatomy of these query functions yeah a firestore query is made up of a few different parts the first part being an object reference to the collection that you're trying to run your query over and then you're gonna have a where function, which has three parameters that you're gonna be passing in. The first is the field that you're going to run the query on. The second is the comparison operator. And the last parameter you're gonna pass into the where function is the value that you're looking for or comparing database properties against. The comparison operator portion of the where function can be many different things. And this includes your basic comparison operators such as less than, less than equals to, equals to, and also greater than, equal to, and greater. <laughs> there's a lot. So, there's so many. <laughs> you can also use more complex comparison operators that are specific to Firestore like the array contains. Uh, when you use array contains in a where function, you're going to be passing in a value and Firebase will compare that value to a array property on each database object and if that value is in the array it's going to return that object back to you. Uh, you can see here we have our first example is the notes example where it's going to check for objects in the whiskey collection that have the array property notes and if the value caramel shows up in that notes array it's going to return that database object back to us. The next comparison operator is the array contains any and it's very similar to the array contains except you can pass in an array of values and if one of mo one or more of those values is in the field that you're comparing against the array then the document will be returned and for this comparison operator you can only have up to 10 values for comparison against um, so you could only have 10 notes in the values array that we're passing in. That sounds pretty helpful. Yeah. So the last comparison operator we're going to cover is the in operator. Uh, you can see in our third example here, it's going to check if a property on your Firestore object is in an array that you're passing in. So in this example, we're checking for the value type on our Firestore objects. And if the value of type on these objects is in the array that we're passing in, so if it's either bourbon or scotch, it's going to return that document down to us. So the last portion of the query function is the get function, and that just actually executes the query against Firestore. So just as a quick note as well, there are some limitations for these comparison operators, especially once you start chaining um, some of the where functions together. We'll go over them a little bit, but it's definitely something you should just keep keep a lookout for when you're writing these. As we mentioned before, you can chain your where functions together in your Firestore queries. So when you're chaining operators together, you can only use one range operator and you can only use one array contains or array contains any in your operator chain. So as we mentioned before, there is scenarios in which we'll need to create a composite index in Firestore. And basically what that means is we have a 
chain of queries in which one is a range, uh, one contains a range comparison operator, and another contains the double equal sign, so a quality operator. Yeah, and that might sound complicated, but don't worry. Um, Firebase does provide an automatic way of setting up these composite indexes. So whenever you run some code like you can see on the screen, uh, and if you, you don't have an index, Firebase will generate an error in the console logs with a link that you can click and it will automatically create that index for you. But if you're a bit of a net case, you can also create them manually in the Firebase console or using the Firebase CLI. So have fun with that, maniac. And of course there are collection group queries. And what these do is they group together any collections that share a group ID. And these are extremely powerful when you're trying to run queries that are in a sub-collection of another collection. Yeah, as you can see here, we've got an example where we are querying the sub-collection distillery. The distillery collection uh, is going to live under each whiskey document. So if we use this collection group method, it's going to search through all of our distillery sub-collections, no matter what whiskey document these subcollections are under. And like composite indexes, these are going to need a specific Firebase index. Uh, these are actually called Firestore collection group queries, but these can be generated automatically with the same link. So just run this code, you'll get a console log, click the link, and it will automatically create that collection group query for you. And you can also do it manually. Why? Why would you do it manually? Today we talked about Firestore queries and also took a look at some examples of its caveats and implementations. Yeah, and then we mentioned how you can chain your Firestore queries and setting up composite indexes automatically. Just as a heads up, we will be implementing some Firestore queries into our Angular blog application in the next video, so keep a lookout for that. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe and click that notification bell. See ya. Peace. Oh.